I'm looking for people that smell like weeds. <laughs> no, 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 really. It what did he just say? What up, everybody? Back in here with one more video. All right, uh, Pastor Jamal Bryant, pastor of Newburgh Church in the Thonia Georgia, I think that's where it is, uh, where the former pastor was, pastor or bishop, anyway. Uh, he said something about he looking people that smell like weed. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna let my man D. Craig Lewis do a. Uh, he preached a message on it, so I'm, I'm just gonna let him uh, go ahead and elaborate. All right, watch this. It says, also of your own self shall men arise speaking, what? Perverse things to draw away disciples after them. No man is validated unless he has someone to validate him. Someone has to follow him for him to feel validated. So they're going to come in. This is every church across the globe. In this last day, grievous wolves with doctrine that is not biblical and is not truth, they're going to come and deceive. Amen? And make disciples after themselves. Jamal Bryant. Y'all know he just went viral, if you didn't know, for being a drug dealer. For Christ. He says he's going to grow weed. And sell it. And teach young men. That smoke it. How to grow it. And they're going to use the land. That their church owns. To farm. Weed. Watch. I'm looking for people that smell like weed. No, no, no. Really it is. <laughs> New Birth is the largest land-owning black church in America. Wow. And so my position to my deacons is why aren't we not raising cannabis? I'll be able to bring in black males. They're able to do it legally. Mm. I'm teaching them farming. Oh, my God. I'm helping them to enhance the ecosystem. Uh, th th this is the kind of conversation. So if the guy, black boy in Bankhead said, they want weed at the church? The smoke... Help the ecosystem? Smoke? He's 100% serious. Look at somebody and say, grievous. Marijuana is a hallucinogen. Period. Just because it's been legalized does not mean it's safe, good for you, or something a Christian should embrace. Just because it's legalized. Hard liquor is legal. But it's not safe, good for you, or something a Christian should embrace. Cigarettes are legal. Right? Porn is legal. Is it safe? Is it good for you? Or is it something that a Christian should embrace? So everything that is legalized. Mm. First Peter 5 and 8. <laughs> I just got to read the first two words. First two words says, be sober. The opposite of sober is high. Is high, yes, is high the opposite of sober? Yes. If you high, are you sober? No. Don't they have a test they can give you? Right. <laughs> if you drunk, you're not sober. Right. You eat too much cheesecake. <laughs> Uh-oh, see, they don't want to go there. You can eat enough sugar to where you ain't sober. 
and you start making stupid decisions. You got a divorce because you ate too much cake. There's one candy apple too many. Yeah, you got to be sober. That's why you got to watch what you put in your body. Amen. Amen. Even prescription drugs and stuff that's legal can mess with your sobriety. So Peter says, be sober and be vigilant. Why did he say be sober? Because when you're not sober, you can't see the devil. He said, be sober because. Be sober. Look at somebody say, be sober because. Be sober because. Because, because this is why you be sober. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking who is not sober. Sober. He, who he may devour. You can't stop him if you're not sober. <laughs> Gotta get scientific with some folks. Because you know, the devil wants people to smoke weed. That's why it's legalized. Now, he wants people to smoke weed so it will disconnect their frontal lobe, which is their guardian. This is, that's your guardian. That's where your body houses all of your rules that were given to you during your development. Amen. So when mama popped your hand because you grabbed at something you shouldn't have, your frontal lobe recorded that. So the next time you do it, your frontal lobe gets in the way and says, remember. This is where we store our morality. This is why it's important to read the word. The Bible said, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Grow how? By nourishing your frontal lobe and teaching it God's rules. So that when you're getting ready to do something against God, your frontal lobe will block you and speak truth to you in that moment. So you don't do it. Yeah, this is why we whoop our kids. We whoop them. We punish them. We teaching them different things. Yeah, we teach them respect. Yes, sir. And it'll remind them of that respect. So when they get stopped by the cops, cop ain't a, is not their father, but their frontal lobe will register at that moment and say he's an authority. Call him, sir. Yes, sir. Call her, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Where did that come from? You didn't just make that up. That came from your upbringing and what is stored in your guardian to protect you. So the devil knew this all along. Back in, two, back in 1998, I preached and told everyone in my video that weed was a hallucinogen and it would disconnect your frontal lobe from your psyche in other words it will allow entrance or ownership of another entity yeah. it's, disconnect, it's disconnecting you from what you know as God Amen. that was back when folks wasn't smoking it like this they used to sneak and smoke it man it's legal why is it legal because the devil wants people to smoke weed so it will disconnect their frontal lobe, their guardian, where morality rests to govern a person with whatever rules they have placed there. This is where the Holy Spirit operates in the life of a believer to guide them to truth. He said he would bring back remembrance of things to lead and guide you. But if you inhibit, you just got one brain. God is using your brain. If you don't use your brain, there's no communication. Oh, see. You can keep trying to fill them in your toenail if you want to. But God is using your brain because that's where your sense is. And so this is where the Holy Spirit is in the life of a believer. This is where he guides them. And he places his rules and regulations there so they can guide you. Then he can bring it back to remembrance because it's recorded there. 
If it's not recorded there, Jay, ain't nothing to bring back. When this region of your brain is inhibited by a hallucinogen, the person's desires change and they no longer desire to obey or be governed by their moral regulations. In other words, it's easier to disobey God if you smoke weed. You essentially disconnect yourself from the Holy Spirit and open yourself up to other governing spirits and entities. Whenever you're high, it's spiritual. <laughs> Whenever you're high, it's spiritual because the roaring lion is walking about looking for folks that are high. Because it's easier. You know, we live in a time, you know, back when I was growing up, you know, you, you want to date a girl, you want to talk to a girl, you had to talk to her father first. You had to go talk to him, see if he likes you, see if he likes you for her, right? But when a, the strong man is not there, the Bible says, how can you spoil a man's goods unless you first bind the strong man? And if you bind him, then his goods are in jeopardy. And so now brothers just holler at girls at random. They don't have to respect the authority anymore because in most cases, the strong man is bound. He's not there. So they're not afraid to just approach. Right? Well, I'm telling you that story, which was a good one. <laughs> using that analogy to show you how the devil feels when your guardian is inhibited. Certain things he can't do to you when you in your right mind. He not coming around when you prayed up. He not coming around when you done fasted. When you've given time to him and read his word and you loaded with scripture. He ain't gonna mess with you. But as soon as you get high. Here comes the roaring lion. You're unprotected. You're disconnected from what protects you from him. I'm preaching in here. Folk don't want to hear the weed message. Amen. And your lips. It's going to be a metamorphosis that you can't reverse. You essentially disconnect yourself from the Holy Spirit and open yourself up to other governing spirits and entities. The Bible calls them what? Seducing spirits. 1 Corinthians 6 and 12. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are... Yeah. Are not expedient. Yeah. It's lawful, it's legal, yeah. but it's not good, it's not smart, right. it's gonna work against me, it's counterproductive. Right there. Yes, sir. Then he says, All things are lawful, but I will not what be brought under. You're not smoking weed without being brought under the power of it. That's what high is. Being high means you're under another power. Can I just use the scriptures? Amen. I preach this thing. I've been preaching it for years. And besides him being in his fraternity with his frat brothers, which we know that's antichrist, because you're in pledge to false gods and dance to demons with your cane. Greek gods that Paul called devils. So you already use your body and your members to worship false gods. So you already in trouble. No matter what's in that sack. You in trouble. Jamal knows this. But for the sake of money and fame, he will become a pastor of weed smokers. You think that's not the reason? He is also a liar. Let me tell you why he lied. Because he is not using the land he owns for the betterment of people to teach them agriculture and land development. You're not doing that by growing weed. He's a liar. They could benefit more by teaching them to farm foods and build properties on the land. Wouldn't that make more sense? This is a contrived attempt to make Christianity look impotent in the eyes of the younger generation. That's all it is. 
and he's being used. Jamal Bryan is a part of the apostate movement that is here to discredit the gospel and make people second guess its validity. He has already become an advocate of murdering the unborn and now he supports weed smoking. He is an advocate of anti-Christ policies being used by the elite to make black people support and embrace the destruction of their own communities. Amen. What a shame. Titus 111, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things they ought not. For what? It's always about the money. Y'all, this is getting crazy, to say the least. You know what? Listen to what the Word of God says in 2 Timothy 3 and verse 13. Let me pull up real quick. It says, 2 Timothy 3 and verse 13. Hold on. I'm sorry. Yeah, 2 Timothy 3 verse 13. It says, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Got to be careful who you follow. You know, I always say this, and I will attest to it to the day I die, that every believer needs to know the Word of God. You need to know the Word of God without fail. That way, when someone comes up and they say something that is not according to the Word of God, it registers immediately with your spirit. And then you then you look at that person and say, no, that's not what God says. Yep. Be careful out there, man. Be safe. God bless you. Until we meet again. Peace. All right, one more thing before we go. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And for a, I will put a link in the description for the full sermon from Pastor G. Craig Lewis from EX Ministries. All right, God bless.